Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Hello everyone, I'm going to be talking about a comic book TV show. I'm going to be doing a series of them from the Netflix line. This one will be Marvel's Daredevil. Being the first show in Netflix's line of Marvel shows, I'm going to say right off the bat, I enjoyed it. It had three seasons. I'm not going to do any spoilers, major plot reveals. I just might mention things that are obvious or in the promotions. So, for instance, season two has Punisher, etc. But no major spoilers. This will just be my feelings on the series as a whole. Daredevil hasn't been my favorite character growing up. I'm a big comic book collector. Well, for a long time I was. I did enjoy some runs that Marvel did with the character. So I'm familiar with it. I enjoy it from time to time. And when he's put into the mix with other characters, I tend to enjoy it. Now, looking at the seasons, I got a little bit of mixed feelings. Um, season one, let's start with the characters. So, Charlie Cox plays Matt Murdock, who's Daredevil, a blind lawyer. And the characters around him, the chemistry is pretty good. So, we have Deborah Ann Wall as Karen Page. I think she was from True Blood. I like that show a lot. We have Eldon Henson as Franklin Foggy Nelson. We have Rosario Dawson as Claire Temple. And she is a special character to me. She kind of filters through all the shows and is like a mainstay. And Vincent D'Onofrio as the Kingpin. And he does an awesome job. So if season one is... Matt Murdock finding his place, learning his um, limits, so to speak. This is not a, or doesn't start off as a big comic book costume show. It's more of a character growth, uh, character development season. It's a slow burn, but very good. I enjoy the chemistry of the characters, even the Side, side characters are pretty good. It looks great in the sense of you feel like you're in New York. The way it's filmed is great. There's no real need for super powers to be displayed. I did enjoy the director's cut of the movie Daredevil, which had starred Ben Affleck. And they do a representation of how Matt Murdock, after being blinded as a child, can see the environment around him. This show doesn't do that. It doesn't show a special effect for it. So that could be a nitpick or a con, technically. But then, other than that, it feels good. It builds up tension. You get to know the characters, the relationships between them. It's written very well. And I thoroughly enjoy season one. I will consider it a slow burn though. That could be a nitpick. But it's the first of the series. It does it well in the sense of flashbacks. A lot of times I I get a little apprehensive when a show starts using flashbacks. They did it very good. So it blends in very well. It doesn't jaw you from the experience. The actors who play were chosen are really top-notch, very good. I still think that Charlie Cox and even the sidecast, to a certain extent, could be in the movies. I don't see there being a big jump anymore, especially now that movie stars are on TV anyway. So, season one, I really enjoyed it. Took a little bit to get through, and... At the end, you're given a little treat as to a costume of Daredevils. Season 2 might be the best season of comic books in the genre of a comic book adaption. The action, the pacing, 
It introduces the Punisher and then later on Elektra. The actors they chose were spot on. The chemistry, the grit of the show starts to develop a little bit more in the sense of being brutal, but not over the top gallons of blood brutal. There's a, it seems like the writing was stepped up, the clash of ideologies between Daredevil and Punisher might be the best I've ever seen, especially when you have a movie like Batman vs. Superman and you got that ideology clash where Superman's the Boy Scout and Batman's the outlaw vigilante. This goes up and is a different realm, but it's a major, major plot or turn of events in the show. And in a nutshell, not giving too much away, it's Daredevil knocks them down, they get back up. The Punisher puts them down, they don't get back up. And it's done well, it's gut-wrenching. You get a little bit of the Punisher's origin. His tie to Daredevil and his presence in the show is is great. It's incredible. Sort of, I guess, quarter of the... Sh- because the seasons are only 13 episodes. A little bit close to halfway. That storyline kind of dies down and then Elektra comes into the picture. I'm a fan of Elektra from the comics. I can half enjoy the movie. Uh, I can critically... Uh, Admit to its shortcomings. Just like Daredevil the movie. But season 2 of Daredevil is incredible. And like I said. I think it might be the best series of TV. Based on the comic book genre. That is supposedly ripped out of the comics. Where the pacing is so well done. The writing. The acting. It all comes together. You can feel the weight of the situations. It's really heavy. And I just can't say enough about it. And if season one is Daredevil finding his place, season two is, is, is it worth it? Um, you know, getting a little bit into the seasons without giving away everything. The problem for me is season three. Now, if you look at the chronological order of the shows, it might be Daredevil, then Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, Iron Fist, Punisher, and there is also The Defenders. So while season, before season three came out, you had had two seasons of Daredevil, possibly two seasons of Jessica Jones, Luke Cage and Iron Fist season, and they go into Defenders, and I love it, I'll probably do a podcast on that. I really enjoyed it. So I'm coming from it from that place where I'm watching it. I know the order. I'm a big comic book fan. There's not one show that I don't like. Although some are better. And season three, to me, lowers the value of the the series. It's so jarring to me. I tried to give it a shot. Even rewatching it was almost dreadful. And yes, it picks up at the end. And season three, picking up from the Defenders is like... He's got to get back on the path. Without giving everything away. And that's how the season is launched. From the Defenders. What happens in the Defenders. And I wasn't happy. I wasn't too interested. They were boring tedious episodes it felt like to me and although you still have the groundwork that it built which I enjoy the side characters the Karen Pages the Foggy um, and the characters that actually come through the Marvel Universe because the shows from Netflix do they make references to the movies you don't get the guest appearance from a star of the movies or a co-star like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. But you'll get references to the green guy, um, something that happened, or an island in the sky. Don't mention it, but season three felt disjointed from that. Maybe there wasn't anything I picked up on. I wasn't happy with the act that they got for the villain. And even the villain's portrayal, I didn't buy it. 
I didn't buy it at all. And even the new characters were pretty good. There was some hit and misses, but, you know, when the new storyline goes forward, more pieces of the puzzle get put together. And you're finding out in season two a little bit about the Kingpin because of season one. And this is where it all comes together. It didn't work for me. I can get to the end of it and even from the beginning, maybe find things that I like. Oh, this was done well. And this made me feel something. But as a whole, I really didn't like season three. And looking back, I think it hurts the series for me. I don't think it'll hurt the series for the a general main audience, perhaps. But for me, it did. Uh, I will do my podcast on some of the, on the other shows. And I would say right now that I think Jessica Jones wins out as the best Netflix Marvel show. But going through this, getting my thoughts and feelings and jotting a little outline down, I really was surprised to see how much season three affected me. It wasn't a fun experience for the most part. On certain days, I'll have a friend or two come over, certain friends, and we would, for the most part, try to binge watch it in the sense that we didn't watch all 13 episodes, but on that day, Thursday, whatever, we watch it, you know, two, three episodes, we can get to, or how many we can get through. And it just felt tedious every week. Every week meant we would just look at each other in between things. And maybe it just happens to be coincidence and chance that we both were affected. And the major general audience really liked season three, perhaps. Uh, I can't say that the cinematography got bad. I could say the writing dropped a notch and maybe the showrunners kind of were shuffled around. I'm not sure I didn't look into that aspect of this. I'm just doing these as a more of a feeling and experience than a real in-depth critique. And I've talked about this in some other things I do, podcasts, maybe movie and trailers. That when you have something and it goes for a certain length, can one season, can a certain couple episodes really ruin the whole tone? So I'm going to say no in the fact that I think as a whole, Daredevil for three seasons is very good. The first season is excellent. The second season is almost excellent. It's perfect. Season three to me is such a letdown. It does lower the score for me if I was giving it a score but it doesn't ruin the experience of saying oh I watched Daredevil on Netflix I think Netflix took a chance on these shows the formula the pacing the length of the seasons really worked well for the shows and I'll do the other podcasts also but in particular looking at how they would put some people on different shows at different times when other seasons were on hiatus and it wasn't done overly um it wasn't too much and it wasn't out of place and it kind of makes sense for a luke cage iron fisting luke cage is a little special situation because he starts on jessica jones but i thought season three would be a real nice wrapping to the show it wasn't what i wanted I can't say it's um, critically terrible. I could say maybe that I had expectations coming from Defenders. And I admit this, that sometimes in my head, I almost write what I think will happen and would be excited to see the direction it goes. And if it doesn't go that way, perhaps I have some bias, but I try to give it a shot. And it didn't win me over. It did not win me over. And having to watch it again, I realized even the aggravation I had. (laughs) Like I said, it was almost uh, a fear or just aggravating that I had to go through it again. And I could say the second time was probably a little bit better for me. But I still found myself rolling my eyes. 
It just didn't work for me. But what came out of the show um, for the title character that launches Netflix, it is amazing. The first two seasons are so good, near greatness, that it, uh, it definitely doesn't get overshadowed by a bad third season. And I might look, go look into this and find out that it was accepted and critically acclaimed the third season. But for me and my friend, no. An associate type friend had similar type feelings, but it's still, I don't know, like if it was a real beloved character, I could understand me um, really being hard on it. But Daredevil's like a enjoyable character from time to time. Like I said, I might have runs of him that I collected, but not like a, oh, I got to pick up every comic that comes out or I got to follow him throughout the comic book lore. I knew enough about him, like I said, and I'm familiar with the character. you got some standout performances in these seasons. Vincent D'Onofrio is incredible as the Kingpin. He adds another level to it. Truly remarkable performance. Charlie Cox as Daredevil is great. I think you could put these two characters right into the movies with no hitch. They would just go right over. Maybe you put them in the... I guess Black Widow Hawkeye realm. Because that's where they would be. They're not like uh, super powered. Although you could say Luke Cage might be in that sense. And I think they did the costume well. I love it. Although the usage of it gets a little muddled. Because in the first season, you don't get it to the end. The second season, it's prominently used. And then the third season, is a little bit of uh, twist and turns, is all I'll say. So Daredevil from Netflix, or Marvel's Daredevil. Great show. Is it marred by, a, in my opinion, a third season that's not... Up to par? Yes, in my opinion. Does that mean don't watch it for most people? No, I would recommend watching it because I don't think the critiques are like the special effects were so jarring. Um, the characters, uh, new writers came in, the characters don't feel the same. No, it's more like I didn't like the direction they went to, the tone they wanted to keep. The pacing that they thought maybe they needed to go to after an amazing second season of Daredevil and a real fun Defenders. But it could be behind the scenes stuff we don't know about. Maybe that kind of influenced things. I don't know about the shuffling around of people. But give it a shot. I don't see a... I don't know, not a major glaring issue, except for it's not for me, the third season. So, you have my thoughts on Netflix's Daredevil. I'm going to be doing all the shows in the line. I've said it before, I do enjoy all of them. There are problems with a couple of other ones. And this one... I would say the no power from Daredevil in the sense where you don't see the way he sees the world is a con. It's something I think they should have highlighted. But the Netflix, it looks like they know how to use their surroundings. The city looks like New York. The area he's in is realistic. You know, maybe they wanted to keep it. If you know your budget is a certain thing, you don't want to do shitty special effects, I'm fine with it. Because it happens in all the shows. They have a real good way of cheaping out on the special effects, but doing it well. So you don't need an overboard um, bombardment of special effects to wow you. And I think that'll be all for me. I still look back on season three with disappointment but man is season two so good the actor they got for punisher was amazing even electra 
I think it's going to stand out in history as uh, a bright spot. Till next time, everybody, I'll see you there.